Hi, I'm Dave Blake from EGD. In this video, we'll be talking about the programming of connected devices that are hardwired into the stop input and into the blue bus input. You may want to invest in one of these. This is the OView programming tool, which can simply plug into the control panel and have, give you full access to all of those menu settings. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so if we plug the OView into this port here where it says IBT4N, um, there's usually a little knockout here which you can take out before you uh, plug this into. But if you plug that in there, and then you'll get a display with the, uh, the gate type, the position that the gate is in as well. Uh, now you can register multiple devices to uh, the OView as well uh, with an RJ11 splitter. So if you had two sets of gates, you could actually uh, theoretically purchase another IBT4N uh, plug that in with an RJ11 lead with an RJ11 splitter and have both sets run back to the one overview and you can carry out programming via this one overview. You'd simply scroll across at the top between the devices, uh, between the gates um, to carry out programming or uh, look at uh, the gate status or event logs, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you how, you how quickly it is to program the gates now you've got the overview plugged in. Uh, if you simply go to the menu, I'm pressing that right button there, C unit functions, the top one, C unit functions again, and then it will give you the, uh, the, the list of functions which you can carry out, you can execute on this control panel. So the first level that we want to carry out will be uh, a Bluebus Learn, which learns all devices connecting to the Bluebus input and to your stop input. So to do that, we need to go into installation and select Bluebus Search. Ready for execution, if I click Run, you'll see then L1 and L2 on the board will start flashing. That's indicating that the, uh, it's learning the connected devices on that panel. When that L1 and L2 stops flashing and goes back to its normal status, that means it's registered the devices. If I click back on the overview now, I can check that I've got the right motor selection by going onto Motor Type, and which is now displaying the uh, ME3024, which is what I've got in. I go back, I can then go into my position search. Now I already know that the direction of this motor is running correctly, but when you go into a position search, typically you want the gate halfway just so you can you know which direction it's running in. It needs to go to the closed direction first. Because this gate is already closed, it will still try and run to the closed position, but it might not be obvious if you're out on site. So again, it will go to the closed position first. Then it will run to the open position, and as I said previously, it will be running very slowly at this stage. You can increase that speed by pressing and holding down the stop set. But you make sure you let go of this before it reaches the, uh, the slowdown areas, and uh, the reason for that is it's just so it doesn't crash into the stops. When it reaches the open stop, it will then close at the normal speed. Again, this on the overview is just displaying operation in progress there. Um, as soon as it's finished, it will say ready to execute again. Um, and once that finally comes back to that closed position, L3 and L4 stop flashing, L1 and L2 will briefly flash, and then it will go back to its normal state. So much quicker, to, much easier to remember on how to do that because you've just got a simple English menu that pops up there that you can select the uh, uh, the executions that you want to carry out. Uh, so that's the basic setup of it. We've done a Bluebus search, check the motor type, done a position search. Uh, there are other settings on here as well you can go into, such as your standard parameters, which we set the auto close on before. But if I go into here, you'll also see you can adjust the pause time to the second. So I can set that's currently set to 30. Let's say I want to change that down to five seconds, simply set change that to five and press OK. You've got reclose after photo as well, so if I turned my pause time up to three minutes but then my reclose after photo on, then basically if I set my reclose after photo to five seconds, when someone drives through the photo cells, the gates will then close after five seconds. But typically they would stay open for, for, the, for the length that I'd set on my normal auto close. Always close is a feature which basically if there's ever a power cut and the gates are stuck in the open position, 
um, then when the power comes back on, the first thing the gate the control panel will do is send a close command to the gates to get them shut. Um, you've also got advanced parameters on this, uh, which will allow you to edit the input configuration and output configuration. The only reason you may, or the purpose you may be using this for, is if you've got additional photocells, um, or if you've got, um, if you want to change the output configuration, you can change the output of the courtesy lamp to be a traffic light. Um, um, there are various kind of outputs that you can uh, select for this. At the moment it's set to flashing lights, but you can change it so that basically the, there's 12 volt pulse that's sent out whilst the gates are in the open position. Um, or you can change it to another electric lock, red traffic lights, green traffic lights, etc., etc. I'm not going to select any of those, I'm just going to leave them as they are. So the other section on this output configuration is the electric lock time. Um, typically that's set to two, usually. But if you had a mag lock connected to your gate system there, you want it to release for a, lot, for a bit longer, just so it didn't snatch back what, just as soon as the gates had started opening. You can increase that time uh, to however long a period that you want it to. Um, when you go into input configuration there, uh, the reason you may want to change some of the input configuration, uh, or one of the reasons for it anyway, is if we go into the close input, which is rarely used on the board, it's not many, there's not many occasions when you'd hardwire a command just to close only. Um, but you can change this to any of the others, so you can change the close input to an open, or a step-by-step, -step, or a pedestrian mode input. Or, what you can do is change this to photo. So it can monitor then relay photocells in place of the Bluebus photocells. The diagnostics will still be the same on, same on the Bluebus uh, LED. So if there, there was a photocell error, you'd still get the two flash fault on the, uh, on the LED. But now you can change a normally open, what normally typically monitors a normally open contact to an input which monitors a normally closed contact. But I'm just going to leave that as it is. So as you can see, the programming on the, uh, the OView is much quicker um, and, uh, and much easier to, to navigate through the menus if you need to change any of the uh, more advanced parameters. Um, now you can use this uh, in the household as well. So you can have this so you can operate the gates from it as well. So if I go into options, commands, and send the gate a step by step, etc. Uh, the other benefit with the overview as well is uh, if I go into the menus on here and go into C unit functions and then go into advanced functions, there's also an event log which you can uh, go through to find out what fault has been present. So, yeah, there's a, if you've got like a uh, an intermittent fault with the gate system there, uh, which is only happening every now and then, then you could leave your OVU plugged in over the weekend or something like that, wait for the, uh, the fault to be reported, go back to your OVU, find out what time it was or what date it was that you had the, the fault occur, go back through and then you can find out, ah, whether it was a stop input fault, input fault or if it was a photocell input error, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much sums up the, uh, the, the benefits with using one of these tools. Typically, it's great if, you, if you're doing multiple installs with the, the, the NICE products. It's compatible with all their NICE 24 volt uh, control panels and it's now compatible with their newer NICE MC800. Um, control panel as well. So that's the basics on this control panel. However, there are a multitude of parameters you can adjust and change uh, depending on the installation requirements for your site. Um, I can go into them in a lot more detail, but this video will be far too long. Um, if you want to get in touch with us with any specific requests or technical requests, please contact us on the details below. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our social media as well. Uh, for the latest in industry news and latest offers.